Hello, this is Jason P. Wilson Zero in X Force, and uh, it's been a while here since my last posting. The holidays uh, around Thanksgiving were quite busy, and I've kept very busy uh, since then. So I have three weeks worth of comics to post, and when I do my pick of the week, it'll actually be pick of the month because that'll be a four a full four weeks of comics deciding which one were the best ones. So I'm really sorry about that. But um, here I have uh, my Marvel comics for the weeks of November 23rd, November 30th, and December 7th. So let's go ahead and dive right in with the brand new Avenging Spider-Man number two. And everything I had to say about the first issue, which was this glowing review uh, top to bottom, I feel the same way about issue number two. Uh, we have beautiful, unique artwork. We have a really fun, yet highly action-oriented uh, storyline. And they come together perfectly. You have splash pages. You have humor. Everything I loved about issue number one is here in abundance in issue number two. I really, really like this new Spider-Man series. And it is an absolute uh, joy to read and to look at. And this is definitely one that must be picked up on trade. Uh, there are some comics I like to pick up. There's some trades I like to pick up. And then there's some comics I like to have both in trade and singles. This is definitely one of them. Love issue number two. I can't recommend it uh, higher than this. All right, next up here. For, for my Marvels is X-23, number 18. Now, this is the second issue in the new story arc. This one having to do with X-23 uh, babysitting the children of, of course, the Fantastic Four slash FF. And uh, she basically has a adventures in babysitting. Uh, babysitting gone wrong to the extreme. Uh, it's really fun. It's for, for X-23, she it's, it's always been kind of like a character study comic. So this is the first time that she's loosened up and kind of had a fun, uh, can, you know, canny story type type uh, thing going on. So I really uh, liked it. I think it's fun. And for those of us reading X-23, this is a nice treat. At the same time, if you're new to the series, now's a good time to jump on. Uh, I recommend getting 17 first. And then picking up 18 as well. You get introduced to her. You kind of see how she interacts with uh, with these kids. It's really fun. And hey, there's dragons. Yeah, there's dragons for real. Really cool. Definitely recommend this. And from the FF Kids to the new book, which is Fantastic Four, number 600. I was a little confused when this came out. We have FF. It's continuing. I heard about Fantastic Four. Now Fantastic Four number 600 comes out. And I wasn't sure if they were switching or if they were going to have two comics. And it seems that they're going to be having two comics. Both FF and Fantastic Four. It's a little confusing. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be on board for both of these anymore. I do like it. It's definitely... Great writing. It's Hickman. He's writing uh, the Fantastic Four as well as FF. This is a pretty great comic, though. If Even if I, if I stop picking up uh, the FF books or maybe not even pick up any more Fantastic Four, uh, I still would recommend picking this up. Now, first of all, i got to tell you straight up, it's an $8 book. So it's best to pick up if you have it you know, in your saver so you can get your discount. Because that's a pretty big discount for such an expensive book. $8 book. At the same time, it's 100 pages. And uh, you get a lot of advertisements, but really not as much as you would expect. Um, 50th anniversary, 600th issue, Fantastic Four, a lot of stuff going on here. And of course, a little bit of spoilers here. I'm sure you've heard already, but the return of Johnny Storm is in this book. So I kind of like that the return of Johnny Storm has come in a big, thick, 100-page super issue. At the same time, it feels like it hasn't been long enough. 
I get what happened. He wasn't actually dead, and I really didn't think he was dead. Exactly what's happening in this book is what I thought was going to happen. I just thought it would happen, like, later on, not so soon. Uh, but with that said, it's still a really good comic. It uh, has good artwork and extremely strong writing. And it definitely makes me want to maybe pick up Fantastic Four instead of FF. I've been loving FF. The buildup is huge. But at this point, I can't have both. So I might just choose one. But I did like this issue. It's very fun. It's very thick. And it'll, it'll take you some time to read. I actually want to reread it because there was some stuff in there that was happening I was trying to figure out because I do read FF and they definitely tie together. So I, de I do recommend this uh, for people that are into FF and Fantastic Four. If you've never read Fantastic Four and you picked up this $8 book, you might be very confused. But it's still a great comic to have in your collection. And that $8 book is heavy. All right, next up here from my Marvels is Captain America and Bucky number 624, the, the, uh, the new story arc since it's been changed to Captain America and Bucky instead of Captain America. So I've made my choice. I was reading both uh, Captain America, the new series, and this ongoing series that switched names Tell you the truth, I did not think I was going to go this way. I really felt I was going to stick with the brand new Captain America book. I really liked it. It had great artwork, strong writing, and it had an old school type feel of a superhero book. But when it came down to it, I thought to myself, that might be something I would rather pick up on trades. And I could skip the signal, uh, singles and instead keep this series Captain America and Bucky it's just very unique and the reason that I made this choice over the other one is first off it has really beautiful inking it's very unique inking I've showed it before my pick of the week it's really bright colors used in a very interesting way it has a very unique look to it because of the coloring at the same time it has really cool inks it has almost like an old school look mixed with a modern look. And it's very unique to this book. I have not read anything else that has that type of look and feel to it. The closest thing would be uh, Scott Snyder's uh, Severed. That would be the closest thing to this type of style. Also, it's um, it says teen, and it is a teen book, but it's really close to an M book. You have a lot of really uh, strong situations and material that makes it a really good read. Uh, I, when I read this book, I think to myself, okay, this was worth reading. And I don't always feel that way about uh, a lot of the books that I read. There's fun books, but then I forget about them. But, but this one is a book that I remember because it's so interesting. Also, we're starting into a new story arc that is all about Bucky's time when he was with the USSR. And enter... Black Widow, so you get to see their relationship and where it started. Again, very, very interesting. So I really love this book. It's becoming one of my favorites. So that's why I chose this one over the um, other new Captain America series. They're both great books, guys, but this one to me was so unique that I wanted to keep it. Also, I love this new story arc. Uh, Black Widow is awesome in this. I've always liked Black Widow, so it was great that she's in the book right now. Uh, next up here for my Marvels is issue number two of Wolverine and the X-Men. I like the first issue. I like the second issue more. I like um, where it's going at this point. Again, it's a fast read. Um, all the X-Books are pretty fast reads, I think. Just my opinion, though. Uh, but I love the artwork. I like the story. And I definitely am interested to, uh, to read more of these books. Uh, I'm very glad I jumped on here. And it's definitely my favorite of all the X books. Wolverine and the X-Men is, is definitely my favorite. Very close would be uh, 
well, actually, I take it back. Uncanny X-Force is my favorite. But other than that, it's uh, Wolverine, the X-Men, and after that, probably X-23. A really good book. And it's only the second issue, guys, so it's not too late. Definitely, if you're going to pick up a few X-Books, this should be one of them. And with that, to the other X-Book that I'm picking up, and that is Uncanny X-Men number two. Um, I, I probably like this one a little bit more than the first issue. I like the artwork. S sometimes it's just okay, but it's been growing on me, so I do enjoy it. The storyline itself is pretty standard X-Men story. Um, Sinister here is back in a different type way. It's it's interesting enough. It's not to the level of like X Force or anything, or even uh, in my opinion, a Wolverine and the X Men. But it is a good a good uh, a good start to an interesting storyline. To be honest, though, if it doesn't get better after the story arc, even though I don't want to, I may be dropping it. I really want to at least read this one and um, and the Wolverine one because you know they both these are the two new books that restarted at number one. So or the Wolverine is of course a new series, but this one was restarted. So I definitely want to keep it. I just want there to be more substance. It's at this point it feels like a fun story, but a forgettable one. But that could change. It's only two issues in. Still, if you're if you're only gonna get a few X Men, this should probably be one of those books. Also, um, I'm liking some of the interaction between uh, some of these characters. Um, I definitely like Emma, Stor uh, um, Emma Stone in this uh, in this book. All right, next up here is FF. Now, this is straight up kind of a breather and a setup to what we've read already. Uh, Hickman has a huge buildup in FF, 12 issues in, and it's still building. Uh, this is a pretty cool um, read for those of us who have read all the 11 before. If you're brand new to FF, this probably wouldn't be the one to pick up. But for those of you reading FF, you know what I'm talking about. This is a, uh, a good story, and I definitely... I'm um, am, am, am enjoying this book. I would say though that I don't know if I'm going to be keeping both FF and, and Fantastic Four and it would be hard for me to stop reading FF at this point because there's no payoff yet but still it's a really strong issue and I would recommend it to those of you who know what's going on. I would say that sometimes FF in my opinion, as good as the writing has been from Hickman, uh, from, from Hickman, has been a little bit long in the tooth. Just a little bit. And next up here for my Marvel is a comic that's not in my saver anymore, but I pick it up when I see it because I have the first three issues. And issue number four, very strong. It's still not at the level that uh, Ultimate Comics Spider-Man is. But it's definitely, I believe, the second best. But since I'm probably only keeping one book, it's not good enough to take over my spot and my saver for, for Spider-Man. Um, also, I've been reading the X-Men, picking those up. I would say that Ultimate is still better than um, Uncanny excuse me, uh, still better than Ultimate Comics X-Men. Uh, that one is a very good comic. It's very much like a X-Men version of Morning Glories, which is pretty good, because I, I really like Morning Glories. Though the action in the Ultimates is just really strong, and it really just has no slow moments like the X-Men book does. This one's like boom, boom, fast, fast. At the same time, it's not going too fast, so the story is thin or anything. It's a good story. Um, I do think I'll continue to pick this up, but if I miss one issue, then I'm just going to be waiting for trades at that point. Do recommend it, but you have to have the first three to 
to be reading at this point. I know, I, I know I'll be recommending the trade when it comes out. It's definitely a trade book. It might be one of those books that I pick up only in trade at some point, though. Okay, and this is a second printing of the last Uncanny X book, um, Uncanny X-Men. And, uh, you know, I wasn't getting Un Uncanny X-Men, but I was signed up for the new series when it launched. So I never actually got the last issue. I heard about it. And I have to say, even though it's a second printing, it's a really cool cover. And a much better cover than the first printing was. So I don't mind getting a second printing. Also, I thought the story was pretty cool. And since I, I, I read Schism and the one shot of Schism and I'm reading X, Uncanny um, X-Men now, it definitely is one to read. So if you haven't read it yet, definitely go out and pick up the second printing. It, it came out recently. And um, this is, a like, like I said, it's a really, really cool cover, especially for those longtime Uncanny X-Men fans. I've been reading it since the 80s. So I really like it, and um, it's a really cool cover. And next up here for my Marvels is 5 of 5, the last issue of Red Skull Incarnate. What a fantastic series. Wow. Absolutely love this limited run i actually wish it was like eight or ten or nine to to the same level of issues as uh the the avengers the children of crusade one it's at that level i feel now of course has has really cool artwork very different very um much based in the time period has, it has fantastic covers all of them looking like propaganda posters and I really like the finale here. It was a very, very strong last issue. This is definitely a book that is a must pick up on trade for any comic book fan. They don't really tell these stories very often. It's a really unique look into one of the most evil supervillains of all time. Red Skull Incarnate is a fantastic limited series and a must read and a must pick up on trade. Great, great book. And last but not least is Kick-Ass 2, issue number 5. Of course, this is Icon, but that is Marvel. This is their side, um, you know, book that they put out so they can get very mature on you but not have the Marvel logo. So I put it in my Marvel stack. And I really liked it. Um, it doesn't come out fast. It's definitely a, a slow coming out book, but I find myself not wanting to wait and read them all together like I like to do because I just want to find out what happens. It's At first, I wasn't sure if it was going to be as strong as the first uh, series, and at this point, I'm not sure it's going to be, but it's definitely, at this point, issue number five, getting a lot stronger than it was in the first like three issues. It, it Still, it was good, which is a slower start. It didn't have that type of feel that the first Kick-Ass did. But still, Kick-Ass 2 has been a very good comic. But I definitely recommend anyone who hasn't read the first Kick-Ass, definitely read that first and then read this. It's definitely a pickup. And it's definitely a pickup on trade. Really looking forward to how they're going to finish this off. Great comic. And with that said, those are my marvels. I'm really curious how much uh, comic book writing, um, reading you guys have gotten during the uh, holidays here uh, if you were slowed down at all like I was but uh, some really strong marbles some really good books and uh, I really am enjoying my holiday season of comics and with that said thanks for watching and I'll see you next time